Well, folks, the reviews are in. The, the re- reviews. The reviews are in. They're just, just pouring in. We had to pull our favorite thus far. Um, it's entitled "This Is a Review." It's a five star review. A five stars, which five. is one of the reasons that it's our favorite. Right. One of the uh, one of the few that appreciates our whatever this is. Our, Babbling, mostly. Yeah, mostly. Of all the failing podcasts that I have listened to, this one fails the best. It is the best of podcasts. It is the worst of podcasts. I've laughed. I've cried. I Q in. And all those 90s memories from the early 2000s come flooding back. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a podcast with a deep insight and profound commentary on life that shakes you to the very core of your soul... This is a great podcast to listen to while you look for it. Amen. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just wow. Right? Um, Just wow. Right. I, I don't even know what... I mean, I... I it... it just, just wow. And, I mean, I appreciate the idea of being the placeholder. Yeah. You know... I, uh, the bookmark, if you will. All through high school, I was a back pocket boy. I don't understand why this should be any different. Uh, you know, we were hoping that um, this would amount to be something that people would listen to on their car drives when um, when there's nothing good on the radio. Nothing and good on. Here we are. Right. We've achieved. We've achieved what we never sought to. Uh, a slow fail. Uh, some success within our failing. Yes. So, you know, uh, we commend you. Uh, what was Bach this? Jackson? Bach, ja- Bach Jackson. We commend you and appreciate your faithful listening um, to what we consider to be uh, the best failing program on the air. Welcome. Fresh out the box. Stop. Look and watch. Ready yet? It's your Podcast. Eat my show. Goodbye. So, uh, so, well, you know, every once in a while, on so, so, a needle pulling thread, la, a note to follow. So, boy, we should do one on the sound of music. T. Drink with jam and bread. Speaking of the tea. The tea. Speaking of the tea, every once in a while, I think it is appropriate that we share some things that we deal with in the home uh, with our significant others or our children just to enlighten our fan base. Okay. Just to enlighten our listener and let them know they're not alone. They're not. There are other people out there with them. That aren't us, but could be us. Could be us. I, I think I'd like to think that we are like other people to some degree. You mean our success hasn't gone to your head? Our su- definitely not. Wow. The, our lack of success. It's actually been more troubling than anything. Oh, I feel like it's gone to my head completely. Oh, I really? Just assume people know who I am, and I stick my nose up in the air and walk wow. on by. I'm more the type that goes, "Oh, they see who I am," and they go, "Oh, that's that guy that thinks that he's something." I would, I yeah, they they would nail it. I at that point, I feel like you and I both have completely different reasons to talk to therapists. Hmm. You're overconfident, and I'm underconfident. Maybe that's why we mesh together so well. Maybe, maybe this flurry of over underconfidence. I don't know. I have heartburn all of a sudden. Ooh, yeah, it's terrible. Not as confident anymore. Not in not in my dietary decisions. Do you need to take some tums? I think it's going back to normal. <laughs> it's okay. just a wave. So, can I tell you about something that I'm dealing with at the house? Yes, please. In the, in the home? Please do. So, as a Christian man, I know that the rule of thumb is we don't like to slander or gossip. Okay? Sure. And I am great at holding to that commitment. You know, I would try not to talk. You know, disrespectfully bad about other people. Try not to, you know, give information that we don't know to be true if my wife and I are talking about things. But she goes to an even further degree 
when it comes to the lack of intel that comes with the stories that she gives. What do you mean? So my wife will come in and she'll have something or she'll have, you know, something that had happened during the day I come home or whatever the case and she'll say, you know, you'll never guess it. And I'll just throw a random example out, right? She'll say, you'll never guess it. The neighbor uh, had a heat stroke. In, Which neighbor? In the yard. And yeah, th- that would be my normal reaction. She'd go, and I go, which neighbor? And she'd go, well, I don't know. What? Yeah. And I'd say, well, wait, how did you find out? And she'd say, well, one of the other neighbors told me. And I'd say, and you didn't think to ask which one? Which neighbor? Yeah. No. No, I just, you know, I was like, oh, that's interesting. We'll say a little prayer. Yeah, we'll say a little prayer. And and I'm like, oh, oh okay. Mm. Uh, you know, I feel like there, there is prying, right? You know, which is like I'm asking for too many details, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then there's this where it's like maybe it hurt people's feelings that you didn't ask for any detail at all. Well, maybe, but maybe the maybe she didn't want to violate the neighbor's HIPAA rights. Ah, is there some sort of neighbor HIPAA right that we don't know well, about? Well, there's a medical HIPAA right, and if something medical mm-hmm. happened, mm-hmm. maybe that's what Micah's looking out for. She's right. like, oh, yeah, HIPAA. I can't ask what his patient information is. Well, I do want to remind the audience, however, that there wasn't actually a neighbor with heat stroke. This, oh, this was just, I was trying to use an example that didn't necessarily okay. directly I affect anybody. I feel very relieved. I was about to lead a um, a moment of silence and invest well for I'd, the neighbor that had a heat stroke. I appreciate that. Uh, Should we do it anyway? No, I I don't I don't want to cause a stir. Okay, it is very hot out in Oklahoma it over is. the last few days. It's a, 113 I, yesterday. I, as it feels like temperature. I'm I am certain that I probably did have a neighbor that had a heat stroke. I just wasn't aware of it. So wow. if I have a neighbor out there that I Your didn't know how to heat stroke, wife I do, really didn't get the tea. This if yeah, you I, don't know that. I do apologize for my lack of tact in um, talking about. You know what? Maybe we should have that moment of silence just in case I do have a neighbor who, in fact, had a heat stroke yesterday while working in the garden. Okay. Uh, um, everyone, I'd like you, wherever you are, in your car or, you know, uh, just passing the time um, in some other function, maybe mowing the lawn, currently out in the heat. We're going to take a moment of silence for the heat stroke victim that may or may not have been. May or may not have been stroked by heat. Thank you. That's pretty quick. Uh, you can't That really, was it? That was Well, you can't do it a It wasn't long, even really a Did everybody have time to bow? I did, you, listen. I, bar- I barely even paused. I feel like the number one rule of podcasting is no silence. Oh, that's t- that was a second of silence on the failing podcast it was a for second, a really. possible heat stroke victim that we're not aware of. There you go. You've officially had your time wasted today. Yes. By a story that literally meant nothing to you right. or anybody else. No, but I can get on the level with uh, you know, what your wife is dealing with. I Occasionally, I'll get a piece of information, and I'll just be so excited to, to pass it on to my wife uh, that I don't ask for any follow-up. Right. And she definitely wants to know the, the answer to the questions. Yes, yeah, I got to know the T. I want right. to get to the deep. So, it, and and maybe that's uh, that's one of the problems is that I I just have this natural desire to know more. Like I'm ex- super inquisitive, so like if somebody's going to ask me that type of question, I'm or or tell me a, a statement, I'm literally going to have three or four follow up questions. Yeah, and when and you know I'll ask her, you know, or she'll ask me, or vice versa. So so what? I, and then I'll tell her, well, you know everything that I know. That's it. Like. You know, so and so died. Oh, really? How'd they die? I don't. I don't know. Right. I just know that they did. Right. But but I don't. I see. And maybe th- but I feel like the it, the important thing is getting the information out. Yeah, but you're part of the problem. See now now you're now you're showcasing who you really are, on the inside. Would you, you rather just not know? I I want you to be a source that digs for the facts. You know, like, like, okay, awesome. So, so and so, you know, whatever the case, such and such, such and such died. John Doe, John Doe died. Oh, yes, poor John Say that Doe. Three times fast. He died, and 
the normal question that would come after John Doe died. Doe died, Doe died, Doe died. The, the normal question that would come after John Doe died is, oh, how did he die? Or, oh, how's the family? Oh, oh, that's shocking. What happened? Then you say, I don't know. The matter's still under investigation. No. See, what you say is, oh, and then you run away to tell your wife instead of instead of getting those details, the, the important details that will square up the story so that it can be passed along in the right yeah. format. So you're, what do you want to know? You want to know how he died? Well, I'm just saying you're leaving it very much open to interpretation, and that's how rumors get started, folks. Rumors get started yeah. when we don't have all the facts. Well, that's definitely true because people get on the Community Watch page and make the facts They're going to make something up. And then before you know it, John Doe died because he choked on Cheerios, which have holes in them, and that should not happen. Oh, what a great way to go, a though. Cheerio I love che- Cheerios. <laughs> Cheerio. They're not Honey Nut. Oh, that's yeah. mi- why would he even eat those? I, you know, because he's I'm starting to think got that a this, sugar problem. This isn't just a mere accident. It's diabetic. Uh, he's di- diabetic, eating regular Cheerios, yeah. choked because he wasn't drinking them with Nobody milk. eats regular Cheerios. This was a setup from oh. the start. See? and It's, this, a, it's a moida. It's a, mo- <laughs> it's a moida. <laughs> Someone was moidered by... Bum, bum, bum. A axe-yielding cereal... No, I I don't know. Philanthropic. I don't know how, I, axe yield. Why would it have an axe and then use cereal... A regular s- Cheerios. A it was a torture killing. <laughs> they gave him regular tor- he's a, Cheerios he's and a, made him choke on him. He's a serial serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> he killed with cereal. Oh my! That would be like a pretty clever story, though. Like you know, if somebody actually did go on a serial killing rampage and used actual cereal, because they're spelled different, you know, mm-hmm. cereal. It's like eating cereal spelled with a C. As so his name the other would one be the S. serial serial killer. Yeah. So so if you had a serial serial killer, we could do a podcast about the serial serial killer. And it would be a whole different segment where we talk about serial serial killing. Oh, my. And, you know, and where did he strike next? Well, I'll tell you what. Have you ever um, eaten Frosted Flakes? And then one of those things turns sideways when you swallow and it's a little too big and it cuts you all the way down the throat yes you want to be dead oh at that my moment, that's that it moment. you talk about serial serial killing it's killing you all the way down yeah that is that's leaving an impression on your esophagus you're now bleeding from the inside yeah yep yeah nope yep i don't like i don't like pasty pigs no <laughs> i um i don't know do you remember when we used to like uh sit at the table and you'd eat whatever cereal you got right that was your choice yeah and then it didn't matter what cereal you were eating, you might want to look at the back of a different box sure. whilst eating cereal. It was the iPad of the 90s. You know, that's actually a good point. I never actually thought about cereal boxes being the iPad of the 90s. Well, they were. It's like, you know, kids, they want to, and I, I typically don't let my kids watch their iPad while they're eating. Right. But, but they want to. They want to. They want some sort of entertainment. And yeah. I was thinking about that the other day about, well, what did I do when I ate breakfast? When I was like, I looked at the back of the cereal box. Right. Um, they had games, all sorts of different, like, you know, mazes or whatever on kids' cereal. Yeah. Um, that you could kind of do with your eyes or whatever. Yeah. Um, see, you had to do it with your eyes because there were four of us. Right. So you You did it with a pen and... And you'd get in trouble. Well, yeah. Nobody else got a chance to do it. I remember when I learned to draw mazes in school and I was so excited about it. Like, I I remember that too. You did it on graph paper. Yeah, you used graph paper to draw mazes, and I took one home to show to mom. I was like, Mom, look at this amazing maze I made. And she completed the maze, and I cried. Uh, She thought she was supposed to. She did it while she was on the phone with Aunt Kathy. What a sheer disappointment. Yeah. That's the so type of thing that happens. You handed it to her while she was on the phone I with Kathy. It to her. I was like, Mom, look at my yeah, maze. Yeah, you sure know what was going to happen. I turned around. I turned back around. She'd completed it in like three seconds. Oh. I thought it was more complicated than that. Our our mom and her sister live far away from each other, so when they actually did get the opportunity to talk on long distance, because that was a thing back then. Yeah. That was normally after uh, a specific hour of the night where everything was a little cheaper, but they typically talked pretty long and immensely with a lot of keckling. Lots of keckling. Lots and lots of keckling. Um, and, and you were not you were not a distraction to my mom no, when she was you on the phone with her sister. You weren't invited into the conversation in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, you there was well zero focus on, on any child. Somebody could have been bleeding, 
And I don't think it would have... Or asking her to look at his maze. <laughs> Yeah, well, say, but that's the that's the type of like she she was on the phone and she was paying attention to whatever the conversation went to. Mm-hmm. Having something in her hand to do mindlessly was probably pretty easy. It was exactly what she needed. And I'll tell you that maze it had to be pretty mindless in order for her to solve it whilst focusing on the conversation she had. Yes. I don't know if anybody has noticed, but we've kind of incepted three times at this point so yeah we're story and a story and a story pretty much story. how we do should this, we bring it back around well okay, i mean so i feel like we can link i want to go back one step because i feel like you really cereal box yes because you're really on something with the cereal box sure yeah so the so the question becomes is this type is this kind of like when a kid watches the exact same show over and over and over again on said ipad because we never really got tired of looking at the exact same cereal box until Another cereal box came along. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, kids nowadays like to watch the same show over again because they can mindlessly watch it. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Even if they miss a little section of it, they still got the premise. You know, it's kind of the same thing with, with people with ADHD. They like to reread the same books or re listen to the same books sure. or re watch the same videos or things along those lines yeah. because they can do other things while their um their brain is occupied yeah you know i don't know you know i we we tend not to let our kids watch ipads or or any device while they're eating as well we feel like that's good conversation time sure um, and so but i will say it's not a hundred percent because of that i think that 95 percent of it is because of the content they like to watch while they're sitting oh at it's the table. terrible isn't it oh it's horrible yeah like I mean, like the, the it's it's families that essentially are making just bucos of money off of YouTube for selling extremely cheap quality production. Sure, and the kids just watch it. Yeah, mindlessly. I, but they don't have be, to. They don't have to worry about it. Though. They don't have to worry about keeping up with the plot. They no. don't have to worry about any of the things that you. If you're watching a show or a good movie, you have to pay attention. Yeah. And we've we've moved into and we've become a generation now Just where there's so much noise. going on outside of whatever it is, and nobody wants to watch and pay nah. attention. That's what the, you know. That's what's so great about the movie theaters kind of coming back alive again. Yeah. And now that we've gone on to the inception realm of another thing. Well, I was still on iPads. One the, one the of the great table. things about movie theaters is you go into them, and where's your focus? It's on the screen. It's on the screen. You take out your phone, people look at you. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can't do two things at once. It is interesting that you know a generation ago, parents and um, and old folks were worried about how much screen time kids were getting when or how close we sat through to the screen. Oh sure. And now this is bad for your eyes. Now we literally are putting a screen on our faces mm-hmm. to watch whatever it is that it is that we're supposed to be. Yeah. You know, dealing with or, or watching. And or, you know, there's a screen in their hand or a screen, you know, at the dinner table or a screen when you go to a restaurant. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're life saving. Some sense a screen on vacation. Right. Oh, yeah. Need it's that a in a car. Boy. But uh, but definitely it, it's definitely changed to a point now where it seems like kids, even when watching a movie, want to have a secondary focus, which we've talked about before. Sure. So. OK, so incepting back. Sure. Right. Yeah. We were at the breakfast table. We were. Incepting back again, uh huh. Is that what you call it? Incepting. I don't know. Inception is a is a, a movie about right. dreams. Well, that's when you. That's when we a dream within a dream within a dream. Yeah, but, but what do you call it when you go? Story. What do you call when you go backwards? Chasing rabbits. I don't know. Not chasing rabbits. I like to say all that to say. I say all that to say. I say all that to but say. But did we say all that to say, or do we just kind of? I think we chased a rabbit. So, this all just comes back to one thing: the tea magic. Right? Do re mi magic. Chasing fa so la tea. Right, tea, tea. We were the talking tea. about the tea, the tea that um, your wife forgets to give, and that I often forget to give. I guess let's go. Let's try and go one or two facts deeper, Michael Lane. You and me on the team. I'm gonna dig a little bit further, and that way we can give um, Luke the tea. I just I just want a little more info. The tea that he craves. Not a lot, just a little. Not even sweet tea. It can just be plain old tea. Tea is good. No, it's not as terrible. Well, I mean some tea is good. Oh. 
Like the gossip tea. Yeah. Shame on you. Yeah, we're my well, we not we don't gossip. We're you know, we're, we're trying you not want to You want it you want it to be based in fact. I want it to be based in fact so that I don't gossip. Right. Yeah. Sometimes the problem is is that you know, you don't have enough fact and so you tend to start leaning into and making up your own kind of like we did about the serial killer. The serial serial killer. Serial serial. So these are the things that we discuss. Indeed. Word of the day today is styling. 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 The word styling is best used when you want to tell somebody how good they look. Mm-hmm. Why doesn't anybody ever say that to me? Then you be styling. Mm. I think you're styling. If your hair is on point, meaning perfect, not necessarily spiked. Well, see, 90s oh, it would I have see. been spiked. If it's on point... On like, point. Yeah, which, yeah. Um, I can tell you Spike Maybe was, they have a new outfit you adore. Oh. Either way, they're totally styling. To- and totes. You should be the one to tell them. Styling. Styling actually works. You know, I mean, when, when we came up, spiked hair was actually pretty popular. Yeah. Or at least we thought it was. Well, I don't know when it became unpopular, but mm-hmm. it was it had a little it had a little it little bit it. of time there. Yeah, there was one time, you know, we would the way that you would spike your hair is you you'd pull it up and then kind of twist it to get it into place so it would have right. a nice spike on the end. Perfect little spike. Yeah. And and when we were in, you know, 6th and 7th grade, you know, so this would have been 86, 87, right? Is that right? 6th yeah. or 7th grade? Sixth or seventh grade, eighty sixth and eighty seven would be sixth and seventh. Eighty six. Excuse me, ninety six. Oh, good night, boy. Ninety six and ninety seven. Eighty six. We were two. Ninety six, ninety seven, sixth and seventh grade. Uh huh. Okay, that's when like spikes were really, like you know, you got the big ball chains. Yeah. You know, and you spiked your hair up. Those metal balls. Yeah, and you would twist the spike so it would come up to a point. Right, mm-hmm. and they used to they 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 would measure how high the spikes were on your head. If they got too high, you, they would cut them. Like who's they? School. The man. The man. The man at school <laughs> would come after you and measure your spikes. Yeah, I remember it happening. Um, not as much to me as it did to some of the other kids that would come with some just really intense spiked hair. But uh, there was one time that I did this really cool thing. It was so cool. Everybody thought, wow, how cool. Wow, it what a so cool, cool thing that this guy's doing. Yeah, where I was spiking all my hair, and I'd have like 12, and I was like, tomorrow I'm going to do 11. And so I spiked 11 the next day, and I was like, tomorrow I'm doing 10. How long did it take for people to catch on? Uh, I mean, I was telling them every day. That's pretty oh. much, you know how everybody else was probably doing schoolwork? Sure. This is what I was focused on. Oh. So was how many spikes to do in my hair uh-huh. every morning before uh-huh. I went to school. Did you take like a picture update? Yeah. Well, Did I mean, you? No, no. The, this was before cell phones or anything like that. Oh. The picture update was in people's memories. I'm uh. sure that everybody's thinking back going, oh, I remember when Luke did that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I totally remember. Yeah. I got all the way down to two, which was just like two in the front. <laughs> 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 How'd that go over at school? Uh, I mean... I mean, no one really said. I mean, everybody was like, "Wow, oh, he made it too." I was a hero. Among, oh, among and among the populace, said I was going to come to do one. Uh huh. And that's when mom cut me off. She was like, "Luke, no. you are not going to school looking like a unicorn." Well, she was okay with you going to school looking like I, the devil. Know, I just, <laughs> I don't know if she just was like, "Okay, you know, it's whatever. It's one day." Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where her head was at. She's probably talking to Aunt Kathy. <laughs> probably she's probably on the phone. <laughs> probably talking long was, distance. I was on my way out, you know. My back's getting hot. Ah, sorry about your back. It's because of this chair. These, these god awful chairs. <laughs> Remember when we bought them for twenty bucks? Yeah, great, great deal. Great purchase. Yep. I'm starting to realize why the people that sat in these before were crazy. Crazy? Was be- I was crazy once. Mm. Until I walked into a room full of rats. A rubber room. A rubber room full of rats. That's that's crazy. Crazy. Anyway, yeah. So getting back to that styling, you styling. Know, you spike your hair up in one spike. You're not so styling. Not nah. at two to twelve. You're good to go. Have a good week. Have a good week.
the following podcast. Eat my shark. Goodbye. Wake up.